Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another story from our true crime series and we'll be doing the story of Nobu Babalo Babsi Nobanda. Now it's important for me to put a disclaimer on this video and mention that in no way do these type of videos serve as a way of judgment or as a way of disrespect to the people in question but rather it's important for awareness and also as a form of deterrence to people who might be considering these type of things to show them that they do have hectic repercussions so without wasting any time let us dive into this video. Nolu Babalo Babsi Nobanda was born in the Western Cape and Cape Town in 1989. She was born to Mother Honji Swambeu, who was a high school cleaner and father who was a factory worker. They would then move to a small town in the Eastern Cape called Gramstown, where Nolu Babalo would attend Victoria Girls High School, which is one of the best high schools in the Eastern Cape. She completed a matric in 2008 and applied to the University of Witwatersrand to study further. She got accepted and would then be moving to Johannesburg in 2009. Now, with all things considered, Nolo Babala's life was on the up and up and she was doing great. Sadly, she would only spend one year at the university at Witwatersrand because of her financial situation back at home. So the following year, Nolu Babalo was back in Grahamstown and she started working at the magistrate courts in her town where she was an interpreter. Now this was a part-time job and was not paying really well, so she really had to start thinking of other ways to make money. Now she confided in a close friend and told her about a situation, about how stressful it was that she did not have money and that she was really, really in a rut. So her friend was like, Babsi, let's go to Brazil and chill. It's going to be an all expenses paid holiday. All you have to do is just pack your bags and let's go, girl. Now, Babsi mentions that she did find this a little bit strange or suspicious that she did not have to pay a cent. But at the same time, she really needed a break. Her life was stressing her out. And she was like, OK, I'm packing my bags. Let's go to Brazil. They caught a flight from the Eastern Cape to Johannesburg, Oratambo Airport, and from Oratambo, they went all the way to Brazil. Nine hours and 45 minutes later, they landed in Brazil. Now, when they got there, Babsi mentions that things were actually good. They weren't as suspicious as she thought they were. She got to relax. They went sightseeing. They went clubbing. They went out to restaurants. So it was actually a good holiday. So she even called her mom and asked, Mom, do you need me to buy you anything from Brazil? But her mother was like, nah, -uh, it's okay. Uh, it's important to mention that they actually booked a one way from South Africa to Brazil and they did not book a return. So when it was time to book a flight back home, things started to get slightly tricky for ba Nolo Babalo. So she mentions that this is when a guy approached them and let them know that they actually have to take a parcel from Brazil to Thailand. There was no mention actually of Thailand when I left South Africa. So we were taking a, a holiday to, to, Brazil. to Brazil. And that's that. And that's that. It's only later that when I arrive there that now they have to buy tickets. No, we're actually going to Thailand. We're going to Thailand? Yes, that's why we came because whatever package that we have to take or whatever it is, we have to take it to Thailand. It scared the hell out of me. <laughs> but the issue now is that I could not go back home and explain. So my idea at the time was, okay, now you got yourself in a sticky mess. I knew I knew it from that instant, but I said, okay, you just do whatever, and then after you've done whatever, you just go back home and try to stay away from this kind of thing and these kinds of people, mm -hmm. but at least just get back home first. Essentially, they were not given an option. It was a matter of if you want to get to South Africa, you literally have to go via Thailand, drop this parcel off in Bangkok, and then catch a flight to South Africa. So she mentioned that although she was scared, calling her parents and telling them that she was stranded in Brazil was actually not an option. So she decided to go with it. So they tried lots of methods to try and get the drugs to Thailand. Uh, she could either swallow them or they would find another option. Obviously, she could not swallow them because that's actually a way to traffic drugs. Uh, she could not swallow them. So the other method was that they decided they're going to do some sort of dreadlocks on her where they would put the drugs in her hair essentially it's heavy it's tight and i was like no even if i have to get in trouble at home and explain to them the situation i'm going home I'm not now though she mentions that it was, she struggled it was sore and she wanted to stop at some point but she actually went through and the drugs were in her hair and she was off to thailand 
Now, Nolu Babala makes no mention of where her friend was at this point. She also doesn't mention if she also had some sort of drugs in her hair or if she had them somewhere else to swallow them. She literally decided to keep quiet because she feared that if she told on her friends, uh, then the people that sent them would actually kill her or her family. To the Brazil airport, she says that when she got to uh, customs, everything went well from the Brazil side. The lady apparently who was helping her, she says that she did look at her hair in a sus way, but she never said anything, nor did she report her or do anything about that. So she boarded her flight from Brazil to Thailand and would land the very next day. Now, she got to Thailand. When she got to Thailand, things went well for a little bit. So she got there, she took her bags, things were well. As she was about to walk out of the airport, two guys approached her and they were like, uh, excuse me, ma'am, can we speak to you in private? Can we go to this room? As they do at airports in, in terms of custom things. So I left with them. And then there they searched everything. They searched my bags and searched everything. They did the whole scan and nothing. And then they said, okay, sorry, ma'am, for wasting your time. I'm like, Oi, okay, made it, made it. <laughs> and then as I was about to exit the door, there was one lady from customs who came. She's also Thai. She says, no, she has something in her hair. Let's check her hair. At the door... That is when I knew that, yes, Babsi, it's over. <laughs> it's over. She froze, you guys. Literally, she knew at this point that things are about to change. And lo and behold, when they searched her hair, it was not dreadlocks. There was drugs inside. 1,5 kgs worth of drugs, which is worth millions of rats. Now, in Thailand, it's not a joke. That is literally not a joke. Drug trafficking can result to a death penalty. So she was in a lot of trouble. That is when the infamous video of the Thai people actually untangling or taking off uh, the dreadlocks was recorded. She mentions that she was so numb at that moment. She could not feel anything. She could not hear anything. She was literally numb and zoned out. And she mentions that she was worried about her family, about herself, because she knew how much trouble she was in. And she was just in her fields. She was found with 1,5 kgs of cocaine, which was actually equivalent to 30 years of life in Thailand law. And she decided to plead guilty. Now, instead of being given the 13 years, they reduced it to 15 years because of her confession. 2012, Babsi started to serve her prison sentence um, in a Thai prison where she shared a cell with 250 other women. She decided to use her time and gained a qualification via UNISA and she also spent lots of her time writing letters to her family back at home. Uh, her mother would only save up enough money to come and see her in December of 2014. In 2019, her sentence was reduced even further and actually was allowed to come back after serving seven years in Thailand. A good percentage of South Africans was actually excited to have her back, while some South Africans were saying, no, it is wrong of us to be welcoming her back with such warm arms because literally she was trafficking drugs in another country. We are always chasing Nigerians or other form, um, uh, foreigners out of the country because of drugs. Why are we then um, uh, celebrating our own when they go out to a different country and traffic drugs? That is tricky. I personally, I wish her all the best from now onwards i mean lessons were definitely learned in this journey and that is it you guys i've come to the end of this particular episode please make sure to check other episodes in the series thank you so so much for watching please remember to like comment and subscribe and i'll be seeing you guys in the next video bye